So shift registers are really cool devices because they allow you to control a practically an infinite number of outputs using your microcontroller that has a very limited number of outputs. So, you know, there's plenty of tutorials out there that show you how to work with shift registers and microcontrollers. But what I'm going to show you here today is completely different because I'm not going to use a microcontroller to control the shift registers, but rather push button inputs to the shift registers. So we are going to manually control the shift registers using these push buttons for the inputs. And I have a little LED here connected to each push button so you can see which is which line is going high and low. All of the outputs are wired to LEDs. So we have two 8-bit 74HC595 shift registers wired in series here so that we can control 16 LEDs. So starting right at the top here is the first output of the first shift register and it goes 0 to 7 and then 0 to 7 for the second shift register. And what's really nice about this is that you can slow things down and see exactly what's happening. And you can do things here that the microcontroller cannot do. Okay, so this is kind of like an abstraction of bit banging by doing it, you know, in the real world with push buttons. The problem with this, of course, though, is we will get bouncing of the push buttons and we might get double clock pulses. So if, for example, I wanted to clock in a bit, I could do that and then clock it into the first to the first LED and then I could clock it shift it latch shift it and so we can sort of do some cool things here and we're gonna go over all this in different examples of how the shift register works but uh, first why don't we take a look at the whiteboard and see exactly what I have wired up here okay so you know this is the shift register this is a 74 HC 595 shift register and you know, kind of the problem with shift registers is that you know, depending on the brand you buy, you all of these uh, pin names may be different. Okay, they all have different names, so you sort of have to figure out exactly what's happening. And that's sort of what's nice about this this example here is that it sort of allows you to experiment with the shift register to find out exactly how all the signals work together. So we have VCC and ground, so five volts and ground, no problem there. And then here's all the outputs starting with the first output, which, which is QA, and they work with letters rather than numbers. I'm gonna call them numbers though, so this would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, okay? And then, here's where things get a little confusing. You have the serial line, and these are all have push button inputs, so I'm gonna call this the data line, okay? This is the output enable line, or I'll call it the blank pin. So when this pin is low, all of the outputs are enabled. That's why they call it an active low output enable, so that in order to enable the outputs, this pin must be low. You have the, the, uh, the shift register clock here, which is what I'll call the latch pin, okay? And then you have the, uh, this would be the storage register clock line, which I'll just call the clock line. You have the, serial clear line which I'll just call the clear line and this is also an active low so in order to keep everything from not clearing you need to keep this pin high okay so when you make it low things clear and that's what this little line over the title means and then you have this QH here which is basically the data output so we have two of these shift registers wired together so one of the the data input line goes straight here but then the second shift register, we have this pin wired to the input of the second shift register here. All of the other signals are all bussed together so that, you know, the pin going to this one also goes, or I mean the wire going to this pin also goes to that same pin on the second shift register. The only exception is the data lines. So you go into one and then out to the other and then that's how you control 16 shift register or 16 outputs total. Okay, so let's take a look here back at the the breadboard. All right, so the first thing I want to do is define which signal these push buttons all correspond to. Um, the first push button is the data input 
to the first shift register. The data input for the second shift register is simply the output of the first shift register, and that's sort of how you cascade them. So if I had a third shift register here, the data input to that shift register would be the data output of the second shift register. The second push button here is the storage register clock line, which is just simply the clock. The third push button here is the shift register clock, which is essentially the latch. It takes data from the storage, storage registers and shifts them to the outputs. And that'll make sense here in a second. These two push buttons down here, I don't really use a lot in real life. I'll just pull them either high or low because they're not really needed. This push button controls the serial clear signal, which when you make this signal low, it clears out all the data that is, that's in storage. So what I'll do is just pull that signal high and then be done with it. The last push button is the output enable. So when you want to just simply blank all of the outputs, you'll pull this signal high and it's really not needed. So I'll usually just pull that one low all the time. Okay. So data is clocked into the storage registers via the storage register clock line and the data line and everything is on a rising edge of the clock. So, you know, right now, since the data line is zero, I could sit here all day long and just shift zeros into the storage registers. So right now, all everything that's in storage is a zero. So if I hit the shift register clock or the latch, it just moved zeros to the output. So it didn't change anything. If I had the data line high on a rising edge of the clock and then let go, I have just shifted a one into the first bit of the shift register. So that's QA. It's in storage right now. So if I want to move it from storage to the output, I'll hit the shift register clock line. So I've just moved one bit to the output. I didn't have to do it now. I could have done that later. I could have kept, you know, I could have shifted in all kinds of ones and zeros to the output and then just did it all at once so that you can sort of update all of your outputs at the same time, but you can do it however you want. It doesn't matter. So let's just shift in now a zero. So this data line is zero. I'll shift in a zero and let's move it in. So you can sort of see what happened there. It shifted what was in QA over to QB and shifted what I just had in or whatever was at the data line at the time I rose this, the storage clock line, it put that in for QA. So now if I want to make QA a one and then I'll bring up the clock line and then move everything from the storage registers to the outputs and you can see what happens. So now it sort of starts to make sense why they call these things shift registers because it's all it's doing is moving data into storage registers. So whatever is for QA is the status of the data line here at the time I raised the, the storage register clock line and then shifts everything else down. So now if I just wanted to just shift in all zeros, I can sort of do one of these guys and move the data all the way over. But that's but but this is really not how you a microcontroller does it. Typically what a microcontroller does is it'll shift in all the data into the storage and then you latch it all so that you update all of your outputs at the same time. So what I'm gonna do is just keep the data line high two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then you can see so I, I sorta of got a double tap on the clock line there but you can just make all of your outputs high by doing that. Or I can shift in a few zeros and then do wanna do that. Let me just shift in a few ones here. And then what I'll do is demonstrate these two outputs. So the output enable simply just turns everything out, all the outputs off. It actually puts them in a high impedance state so instead of actually driving them low, they're actually just kind of turning them off. Okay, this line here is the clear line. So everything that's in storage would go to zero. 
So the next time I latch data in, moving from storage to the outputs, it's gonna move all zeros to the outputs because that's what this did. It just erased everything in storage. And there it is. Okay, so I mean, that's pretty much it. And with this, you can do sort of cool things like, is it really truly the rising edge of the clock line that shifts data in? Like, like we know that that shifts in a one. Let me reset that. But what about, what about, you know, is it truly the rising edge? Like if this is high and then I just, you know, do things with the data line here and maybe the falling edge, did it shift any data in? And this is, that's sort of the type of things you can prove out here. So I latch in and of course nothing is there because it is truly the rising edge that shifts data to the outputs. So, I mean, that's pretty much it. And that's the tutorial. Hopefully that makes sense. You know, typically again with a microcontroller, you would have all of your outputs here. So let me just uh, shift some data here. I just want to show you what you would do. So if you ha if you're actually using shift registers in real life and using a microcontroller, you would have your all of your outputs set. And then when you wanted to update this, you wouldn't latch the data until you've you've set all of the outputs of that shift register. So what I'll do really quick here is just set these. So I'll set that to a 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. And let's see if I can get this right. I didn't count that, so let's see what happens. And there it is. So that's how a shift register is actually implemented using a microcontroller. But at least this demo sort of helps, I don't know, sort of drives the point home a little bit better as to how shift registers work and how you truly can control all of these outputs. And uh, that's the tutorial. So thanks for watching.